Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this, a brand new day in which I have a hamster on me. It's little Gojira. I woke her up. I had little Figmo out earlier, but he was actually pretty wild and aggressive, so I'm gonna, not aggressive, aggressive, but he was pretty wild, and I felt bad about waking him up, whereas she's pretty much more mellow. I don't like the whole might rate, might, makes right thing but i i'm a predator and their prey so i can't feel too bad about it <laughs> i'm gonna put her back in her cage though thank you very very much little gojira i'll put your little cardboard thing over the top of you again so it's dark i mean lights on so she needs to have it dark so she can sleep and i'm wearing my new choker i ordered ordered i ordered this it was about ten dollars it's cheap my very protruding adam's apple is kind of you know it's either resting above or below or inside and i don't know how it should fit but i i'm not good at choosing colors i only have the one it's black and does it fit with my bright circus colors <laughs> of my shirt here probably not but it's all i got and so i'm trying to get used to it definitely a thumbs up. I mean, I've, I've worn necklaces on and off through my life, you know, like a gold loops or the type that my parents used to make where my father used to do napping, which is where you just chip stone or antler and you make arrowheads or spearheads or such off them. And he was so good at it that you could hardly tell except for dating and all that, that it wasn't made thousands of years ago. So he used to make the things and then my mother would put a wire thing around them and so I've still got a couple of those. But still, you know, they hang. And I've always liked to look like a choker, so. Hey, gotta get used to it, thumbs up for that. And the reason I say this, life is a constant balancing act. I've been thinking about this one a lot. It's like, I'm not sure whether to use the idea of balancing plates on a pole because it's hard to find people that do that anymore. And so making that as an analogy, does it really work or fit? But, or you could also use as the one, it's like they're all just dials where, well, dials, little meters you know, with zero at the bottom and 100 up here, and they're slowly ticking down. So you got about 100 of these that makes up your life, and you've got to keep those up. Let's use the whole dials and meters thing. So the if you're healthy in all of your ways, all across your board, you're at 90% or above. If they get from 90 to 70%, they're acceptable. 60 to 50 things are falling apart and if it goes below 50 it shuts off you can only affect 25 of these at a time so you've got to spend your time with these 25 make sure they're up and then you the while you're doing that though as these goes up these others are slowly drifting downward but you've only got 25 at a time so you've got to spend some time here and then you got to go spend time over here working on these ones but things overlap so is there your group your 25 are actually in groups of five but as you spend time on this one it also lifts the others in those groups up a little bit because if you're doing social it's going to help you on all of your other things that show social stuff affects and so as you raise that social one, all the others kind of go up too. But all the others are going down everywhere else. So you've got to split your fives up among the things that are failing the most. And that's just life. That's the way things are. That's the, People have busy lives. You work on social, it, but if you concentrate on that and everything else falls down, your own emotional health, your physical health, that stuff's all going down. So you got to split your time. You can, of course, if things really fall apart, only affect 10. And each time you do that, it affects each one of those twice as much, but only those while everything else is falling down. Or you can really super concentrate on one and ignore the others. 
but everything else falls apart so much faster. You will inevitably reach a point in life where something collapses. You can't help it. It's part of being human. When it happens, you just gotta pick yourself up, start over again, and keep going. Painful though it may be. So that's just one of the things I think about as I'm walking. <laughs> it's just an analogy of life such as such as that. Maybe not even a good analogy, but it is an analogy, so thumbs up. Good golly, Miss Molly. I didn't go walkies last night. I'm kind of disappointed, but also um, when I don't go for one night, I find that the next night I can do even better than I had been doing out walkies. Like if I get tired on a six mile walk, if I do a day where I just relax, and then the next day I power through a seven mile walk and feel great. I'm still painful. Painful? <laughs> I'm still pained and broken when I get back, but I've got the energy to do it. And then I can just keep going from there. So intermittent exercise is a good thing, just not always. I mean, you want to do more than less, even though that less does help. But again, not with everything, of course. Football players, that's why they play when they're sick, because if they miss a day of training, they have to work two days just to get back to where they were when they took a day off for sickness. Some things you can't do intermittently. But that's life. I've been thinking of all sorts of ideas I need to, and not just ideas. In fact, I've got one Novel idea, not novel, even, I don't even think I could stretch it out to a novel, like a novella, but it's one of the first ones I came up while developing this sort of overarching meta idea. And so that beginning story may not be altogether the best one to start with, but the overarching meta thing is got like, it's like the end of the universe and all that, but life is life that way but it's got an infinite number of weird stories that will happen like one of them just as a, a thought because of the construction work they've been doing you know where they tear down the road so that they can build it back up well it's like what if one of these events that happen in the overarching meta of the story thing is in a town like Shelton somebody who's been doing construction in that town his whole life and actually laid one of the roads like four years ago and now comes back they're tearing the road down and so they're going to build it back up so they got to break it down to the to the level of the dirt and then work up and he built that road only they've gone down like four or five layers and there's still more they keep breaking it down, they break down the concrete, they tear that out, then there's blacktop like it's supposed to, and then they tear that out, but then there's another layer of concrete. And then they break the concrete down, and then there's more blacktop, and he's like, I put this road here four years ago. There's only one layer, we're 10 layers down. And it's breaking his mind and nobody knows what's happening because everywhere they go through town, they can go down 10, 20, 30 levels and it just keeps going down the road. Who would have done that? How could that have happened? The town's only been here like a hundred years. The layers deep it would have had to go would have been, the town would have had to have been here thousands of years. And so that's just what happens with one of these events and then it's a very minor one because the people like lived through it this is the only thing that happened and they're trying to deal with what on earth because that's impossible but it happened in the overarching meta story of this what happens there's whether it's far in the past far in the future whether it's right next to us in our own galaxy or literally as far as you can get away from us on in space and still be in the same universe 
what happens is these people figure out how to unroll one of the dim dimensions that we have. We are three plus one, with, which is the way we work, which is you know left, right, up, down, forward, backward, the three dimensions plus one for time. If we come across a four plus one being, which is you know fourth dimensional, that's going to be really bizarre. There is a fourth dimension, and we don't know what it is, but it's like a fourth dimensional being casts a three dimensional shadow. A three dimensional being casts a two dimensional shadow. That's what we do. A two dimensional being casts a one dimensional shadow. What would a one dimensional being even be? But. <laughs> With this idea that I had had, there are these people that figured out how to unroll it, this one dimension, put stuff inside of there. They have a self-modifying, self-replicating set of machines that are filling this space. But you can't fill a dimension any more than like you could fill left. There's always going to be a left. Even if there's a mountain there, the idea of left is still there. You can't fill it. So you can't fill a, this dimension any more than you could fill left. But they also had the idea that these are the predictions if we're wrong, if something goes wrong, these are what will happen. Keep trying to detect this thing. And so they've been 100,000 years since the determination and fixing of this stuff. They're, pretty much all technological advances have stopped because how could there be any more? Anything you want, this thing provides it. Because if it doesn't have the energy in manufacturing facilities, it just goes, fills up more, and then provides you with what you want. But over the past 100,000 years, all of these events have been happening and they've been trying to detect if the math is what's actually happening is what is predicted because they've also discovered the entirety of their home galaxy is approaching one of these events. And if one of those events happening over the entire galaxy, well, they're gone. But they can't just shut down that thing, even if they knew how, because out of Everyone in their galaxy, there are, tr you know, a trillion to the power of ten to the times a trillion inhabitants in their galaxy. And if they shut this down within days, 75% of all those trillions are dead. And within the next week, a good 99% of everyone there will be gone because so much of their technology and so much of the planets they live on requires this energy and ability of these machines in that folded dimension to do it. Turn it off and there's all these planets that are within suns that go pop or suns themselves that go woof and world ships that suddenly shut down. So what do they do? kill 99% of everyone that lives or let it the machine just keep going and then everyone dies 100% of everybody because in the final overarching meta thing they've got it this their detector down to 101 decimal points and finally at the 101st they find the discrepancy that shows the math is right and everything's going to go because because of their issue they have, when you enter or leave these things, the unrolled dimensions, you have to enter at the proper angle and energy and all that. Because if you enter and leave separately, you come out different times, different places. And because of this, even if they're not even sure that even if they shut down the machines, that it's still going to not happen because of all that stuff that has been going on for 100,000 years. So eventually the entire universe did flip over into an event because of what they've done. And so these events are things that happen in the stories. So there's an infinite number of events, an infinite number of stories that can happen. And I've wasted time talking about that. I need to write them instead of just talking about them. <laughs> But thank you very much for coming along with me on this journey of exploration. At least I got to talk them out, because if at least if I die tonight, people could say, hey, you know, I bet that would have been a good story, instead of just no one knowing. 
And hey, I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. It is a range of 20 to 25, because even though I count in American Sign Language, there we go, on the fingers of this hand, with my depression and fibro, I've gotten a whole lot better, but I still get lost. If I mispronounce your username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're just not good at that sort of thing. And of course, I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterward right now. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment, a good comment, a bad comment, and a different comment. The fact is, you left me a comment. Afterward, I'm going to read as many as I can, thumbs up each one I do, answer as many as I can. But for right now, just thank you for having left me a comment. Calling up my caroom. Gas escaped from my stomach. Uh, Von Tay Cordova, I sure hope I'm correct. Thank you very, very much. And F Furkan Vekartler, ooh, I'm nowhere close, but thank you very, very much. And Arthur Aram, greatly appreciated. And Random44, thumbs up and thank you. Lum Lumineon, thank you very, very much. And Evan Alexander, thank you very, very much. Naishya, I sure hope I, I am correct. Thank you. Antonio Vasquez. Thank you very, very much. Crossfire. Greatly appreciated. I love Chucky. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Guacamole Stinkies. <laughs> How about that? Thumbs up and thank you. And Russian Timing. Greatly appreciated. Marco B666. Thumbs up and thank you. Mr. Finland. Thumbs up. And Paul Mahuron. Thumbs up. And... Pandora NYC1, thank you very, very much. Landon Arnold, thank you very much. Hand over the W. I don't know what that means, but thank you very, very much. And Cynic, greatly appreciated. Mark Carroll, thumbs up and thank you. Cyrus2728, greatly appreciated. Vanished Scar, ooh, heck of a name. Mur Muraladaran Yaganathan, ooh. I'm nowhere close, but thank you very, very much. And Flat Earther BTW, thank you very much. And Random Polish Man, greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you. Ah, oh, so tired. It's, not, it's just tired now from holding my arm up instead of it being sore and, and sharp and pained from, from the fall. So I'm almost completely recovered. Yay! And I took a shower today, which is one of the reasons it is 12 minutes after 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, minus 8 Greenwich Mean Time, Universal Time, whatever the UTC stands for, I can't remember. Anyway, I just thought I'd point that all out. Anyway, though, if you can check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, NearlySeniorCitizen.com. One day I'm going to actually write in that blog, promise. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation for my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And of course, if you could subscribe to this channel, that would be very cool, very awesome. I would greatly appreciate that. I would understand if you did not wish to. I do things like I accidentally bought this. Coconut cream. I hate coconut. This was a dollar. I threw away a dollar. I might as well have given it to a, a, a cat and then said, bye bye kitty, go buy something with it. I'm never gonna eat that. I, I, oh, I'm gonna vomit if I eat that. So anyway though, I've done it again. I don't know what I used to say or do, but I've managed to get things confused. So. It's about time that I start shaking things up again. Every time I get comfortable, it's time to change things. And especially the, all these things I see on YouTube where they say every three or four years, you need to shake things up. You, you don't want to follow trends, but you need to shake stuff up. And it's been four years I've been on YouTube. So I probably should change things up somehow. I'm not sure how I'll figure something out, but being comfortable getting in a rut is not a good thing and I don't want to get comfortable and in a rut because every time I get comfortable life manages to t-bone me hard and that's not good anyway though if I have a reaction video today that'll be awesome I wouldn't count on it I'm still getting better emotionally so hopefully I can but if I can't I can't I've got a game video I have to edit and render and then of course do another one 
so thumbs up for that. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that, my friend, is a very good thing.